Hey guys, I was thinking I left one thing undone, which is that I told you I would make an example version of my thing with a computer player. And if you look at the tutorial series from this guy, he does that in the fourth video, but he does it in a complicated way. And I want to do a very simple one just to show that it's possible. Once you've got it, you can mess with it and do more interesting things. But um, I have an example right here with two paddles and we can take that as a starting point so I open it right here and if you hit run hopefully it'll work I always want to hit run first yeah the uh, left one goes up with keyboard and the right one or left one is W and S right one is up and down and if you notice the ball like got away from us before we even started there's got to be a better way. I think I should probably add a little countdown, like a 3, 2, 1. Oh, see the collision's a bit off too, but um, we can work on that stuff. I think it'd be nice to have a little 3, 2, 1 go so that everything has time to load and you have time to um, get ready. Also, you kind of have to click in the window once. If you don't, then the keyboard controls sometimes don't work like that doesn't have the focus and that's not where the input is going but anyway it works in general like you can hit run and you can get stuff to happen so let's use that for our computer player because we won't have to do the collision again I mean hopefully we'll make it better but we won't have to make a paddle or make the collision we just have to move it with uh, take out this chunk we can move this guy with up and down, or go back to mouse or something else. But the left guy, or maybe the right guy, we don't we don't care which one. Uh, we'll move by the computer. So let's go uh, fork to keep what we have. I don't want to change what I have. I want to um, mess around in a new sandbox that doesn't ruin anything previous. So let's put. Uh, Comment. Actually, I don't want to delete that one. I want to go computer control battle uh, attempt one. You know. So I'm thinking that the one on the left is going to be the computer because since our very first version, we were moving the right, and even though traditionally sort of left is like you know the starting point or the player one in my mind I don't want to have to switch back and forth when I go to chat test this or test another one or test one of your guys in my mind I don't want to switch like oh I'm doing the left one now and I'm doing the right one now I'd rather uh, keep that consistent so if we were going to make this like <coughs> a consumer product like to give to people I'd probably want the left guy to be us and the right guy to be the computer. But uh, for now, I'm going to do what's easy for my own brain. Uh, we can take all the help we can get. So we're going to take this thing and change it around. So right one, I might go back to mouse because I like that better. But that's only one line, so it's not a big deal. Uh, in fact, let's do that now. Let's just take it out of our uh, other version and just copy that line because I forgot exactly what it is. It's like mouse underscore git pause or something like that. So we got, uh, yeah. Take this. Put it in here. That's, yeah, that's going to work. Uh, because this is moving it based on where your cursor is. And I, I've been doing this on my desktop, so it might be slightly different on your guys' Chromebooks with the touchpad. Let me know if that's the case, but um, I'm sure it's fine. And now, um, by the way, I don't really know how a browser interprets that stuff. Like, does it know where you on the touchpad? I'm sure it does in some way. Like when you have those click a button to say, I'm not a robot, they're, they're reading your input some way. Anyway, let's look at this guy. Uh, we might change the names from left and right to, like, computer and human or something, but 
obviously left and right are pretty descriptive. If you had to remember which was which, that would be burdensome. So maybe it would be uh, both in the names. So let's see what we got here. What I want to do at first is make the computer player perfect. Just They just match the ball uh, y-coordinate all the time. Never lose. Unbeatable. Okay, then later we can make them like do the wrong thing 5% of the time or something to give the human a chance. But in a weird way, it's often easier to start by making your computer player perfect. Uh, somebody in the quarter one project did paper, rock, paper, scissors. And it's pretty easy to play perfect strategy in that game because it's just choose randomly each one a third of the time. Uh, the only thing easier would be to just pick one and do that every single time, like rock 100%. Um, so for the for uh, Pong, the perfect strategy is theoretically you could like predict where it's going to go and just wait there. But since the ball moves uh, slow enough and you move fast enough, you can just uh, track it and match it. Or I assume you can. I haven't tried it. Uh, let's go to... Uh, self dot y equals uh, what is the ball called in this one? Oh, we have two balls. Oh, that's where it gets spicy. Where you be like, um, is it gonna try to get both? Is it gonna like bounce between? Oh, let's just pick one. You know, uh, ball play dot y. And for now, let's take the other ball out. I forgot this version had two balls bouncing around. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I just left that code in for some uh, fake reason. Yeah, I took the uh, took the second one out, so I don't really need to do that. So this says um, key input is never used, so we don't need this line. But keep it around in case we change our mind. Oh, what the heck? I left this in from another version and I didn't delete it, so I could have copied that over. <laughs> Got to pay attention, folks. Uh, but this, I just want to show that I'm making this up as I go. I didn't have like a brilliant plan with notes or anything. So, um, is this going to work? Probably. Let's see what happens. Obviously, it takes a while on the first time you do it. Oh, look at that. It is tracking the ball. It is unbeatable unless the collision messes up and it accidentally goes through the players of the computer's paddle. But that's pretty cool, right? It's just perfect. One way to defeat it would be to make the paddle slow. And like if it's way at one end and it has to get to the other end, um, it can't do it in time. Another way to defeat it is to just say, like, oh, a certain percentage, it moves the wrong way for one second or something. And then if you stay consistently bouncing on your end, then eventually you'll make it miss just by sheer, uh, you know, persistence. Another way to beat it would be is if it uh, predicts where the ball is going to go instead of moving up and down all the time, it just moves to where it would hit the wall, and then a certain percentage, you make it calculate that wrong. Um, there are lots of ways that could, or maybe it like can be juked by the player. Like if you move a certain way, you can like throw it off. There are obviously a lot of ways to do that, but it's really fun to think about the AI, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Like I said, with rock paper scissors, the perfect strategy is you know one or two lines of code and for this the perfect strategy is one line of code just make it self.y is, is ball.y but that's something right um, it's fun to think about in terms of games playing against the computer um, we would really like to get some more interesting stuff in here like i said so that you can outwit computer and like oh if I bounce it this way then it's gonna go this way and he won't be able to get there in time uh, that would be when it really gets fun you know which is just like any game I mean I've been playing uh, Sekiro on the PS4 and that's a great uh, simple 
game where like you have a couple moves and the bad guy has a couple moves, but you can uh, you know lead them into a bad position through uh, you know seven steps of a combo or whatever. Um, so that's enough for now. This video is getting to be too long, but I want to show an example that you can do more stuff, more creative stuff with really simple code and maybe take it in a cool direction. After you do the simple part, then you can do some fancy stuff with it. Thanks.